The sandbox team for Halo Infinite gave us a ton of information on the philosophies of weapon design in Halo Infinite. So in this video, I'm going to go into deep dive on exactly how the weapons are going to interact in Halo Infinite. Talking about the clearly defined roles that 343 is looking to reset with Halo Infinite, new weapons post-launch, the recent change to the Ravager, as well as the ability to possibly select your firing mode. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as you wrap up the Halo Infinite, make sure to tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date. Let's get right into the content here. Anyone who caught our original video talking about this update that we got for Halo Infinite was massive. And it was so large that to put it in one video, I kind of had to pick out the highlights. But I want to dive deeper into this development update and really go into what they're discussing in this. Because even though this is very high level and philosophy kind of based kind of rhetoric that they have in this blog update, it does give you a lot of insight on what kind of experiences we can have you should expect for Halo Infinite. They go into really great depths about the damage types that we have within Halo as it being kinetic, hard light, or plasma based weaponry and what the functionality of those are and how some of the weapons have changed since the original gameplay demo reveal that we had in July, specifically the Ravager, and how over time these weapons can change due to community feedback. We're also going to take a great look at some of the brand new screenshots that they have and some of the changes that they've visually made to a lot of the weapons since the gameplay reveal in July of 2020 as well, and how it looks you might be able to select your fire rate for the first time ever in a Halo game. Let's take a deep dive into Halo Infinite's weapons. Well, it turns out the weapons were one of the first things that the sandbox team at 343 decided to look at when it came to putting together the sandbox for Halo Infinite, as obviously they play a huge part within the gameplay of Halo Infinite. This is exactly what they said right here. Weapons were the first area we wanted to have strong roles that players gravitate to because of certain play styles. So we started from a blank canvas and called out all of the high level roles and play styles that we wanted players to experience. From there, we started to get into the details of which specific weapons were going to fill those roles. This is great to see 343 kind of going from the ground up about how to build up the sandbox for weapons for Halo Infinite. As for Halo 4 and 5, the main concern I had with the weaponry was the redundancy and some of the non-intuitive actions that a lot of the weapons did in the game. What I mean by redundancy, as especially with like say like the DMR and the light rifle, especially in Halo 5, they were kind of like the exact same weapon. Obviously they have minor functionality differences, but ultimately they really just kind of played the same kind of way as a long range single fire weapon. The scattershot and shotgun really did fulfill the same roles. Yeah, you could do some pretty cool bounce shots with the scattershot, which I actually really enjoyed, but a lot of times they didn't really feel that necessary to do. And it was more just like, I'm trying to be flashy rather than actually being strategic or something that would be more advantageous than just using something else at that certain range that you would need to do a bounce shot at. And what I also mean by the lack of intuitiveness when it came to a lot of the weapons in Halo 5, for example, I remember in the beta, and I know a lot of people felt the same way as well with the Hydra as a power weapon on the map Regrets, where a lot of people first picked it up and they just kind of started shooting because they thought it was kind of like some kind of multi-shot rocket launcher kind of thing. It didn't really turn out to be that effective. I actually didn't recognize until I saw it on Reddit in a clip where you actually scope in and it locks onto players. It pretty much just like blew my mind and I just didn't even think about that option. Or like one of the wreck weapons in Halo 5, I believe the Ad Victorium rocket launcher where it shot multiple shots and actually if you shoot and then scope in, you can actually use that to kind of direct where you want the rockets to go. I didn't realize that until about a year in. So there's a lot of room for improvement for 343 to show the how they can make weapons that are intuitive and simple yet very fun to use. Like kind of building off the topic that we mentioned about working from the ground up to build up a weapon sandbox that's fit for Halo Infinite, they bring up previous examples of where they kind of ran into some issues back in Halo 4. For example, if we had the damage type system in Halo 4, 
when the light rifle was created, instead of having the DMR and light rifle be similar minus different visual effects and damage tuning, we would have weapon traits unique to the light rifle because it shoots hard light. Rather, all hard light weapons would have unique attributes to them that aren't shared with the typical UNSC weaponry or what a kinetic damage type weapon. This kind of builds back into the philosophy that they're talking about how they want to make sure that each weapon is and weapon type and what damage type has its own defined roles in it. They mentioned here specifically about how plasma weapons are very good against shields, kinetic weapons are good against health, and I guess forerunner weapons are gonna act differently, but uniquely as well. So it does sound like from reading this quote specifically that hard light weapons will be coming back in Halo Infinite. I'm assuming we're gonna be having some forerunner weapons, but are they gonna be made of hard light? Are they gonna be using beams of light or something else? I mean, I would love to see what the team at 343 is gonna be putting together to make that weapon type much more unique than just like another kind of weapon. Another aspect they talked about was the lone wolf factor when it came to the combat doctrine, which we covered in our previous video, but in this one specifically, they talked about weapons in multiplayer. This is what they said directly. They said, one way we achieve this, which is the lone wolf factor, is by looking at designing, tuning, and balancing the starting loadout for players in multiplayer. The basic traits, tools, and weapons must allow the player to be effective from the moment they spawn without the need to scavenge for a good weapon. This is something I really feel is an issue that Halo's always had a problem with. With If you're not playing like Precision Slayer when it comes to the MCC, playing like Auto Slayer, I really don't like that. Like in Halo 3, starting out with like an AR and a pistol, and someone else has like a battle rifle or literally anything else, you feel kind of like underpowered. Same thing with Halo 2. If you don't start out with a battle rifle in Halo 2, you feel kind of useless. Now this hasn't been confirmed, but since we've seen like a true to form battle rifle coming back in Halo Infinite, I have a very strong feeling that that's gonna be like the standard starting weapon that we'll have in multiplayer. Especially since the track history of Halo's multiplayer that the best meta setup, at least for spawning, was starting with a battle rifle like we had in Halo 2 and Halo 3. Though the Magnum was a fantastic choice in Halo 5 as well. But they also need to balance this out because we had this issue with Combat Evolved where this CE pistol, which you start out with, was so powerful, there really was no need to pick up any other weapon. So they're looking to try to find that nice balance between the two. Okay, for this next section, I just want to take some eye candy moments and look at some of the new weapons coming into Halo Infinite. Here we have the MA-40 assault rifle, and you might just look at it, yeah, it looks the same as the trailer, but it really doesn't actually. The gameplay demo, the rifle looks way more bland, more gray. This looks way better. The color differentials are way more defined. A nice yellow stripe right there. Now this could just be like a weapon skin or some kind of coating that we have that we could do that kind of match like the classic Reach style. But this looks absolutely fantastic and a huge improvement from what we saw in the gameplay reveal. As you can see here for comparison of the saw rifle, it's much more grayed out, not nearly as drastic in the color changes. Like even the stripe on here is just kind of, well, gray. It's just gray on gray on gray. It's just true to Halo Reach's art style, honestly, but uh, obviously it does not look the best. And I'm really glad of the new art style change that they brought to the assault rifle in Halo Infinite. Next here we have the BR-75 battle rifle. This is pretty much just like your tried and true battle rifle that we've had pretty much like in Halo 2, Halo 3 kind of visual style to it. Uh, you can also even see that they added in a rail system right here, which I can't remember if that was actually in the original Halo 2 or 3 battle rifle. I think it was in H2A, but it's great to see that that's gonna be there as well. Again, like this just looks like a great looking battle rifle that kind of blends the Halo 2 and Halo 3 look. And to me, it just looks absolutely fantastic. Here's a new weapon, the Halo of it. This is the Bulldog shotgun, the shotgun that we saw in the gameplay demo. And the cool thing about this is that they mentioned within this development update that this shotgun is kind of meant to be kind of like a middle ground between like a mauler, which was kind of really close range, not really effective by itself, and the traditional sh you know pump action shotgun that we had. This is like a drum mag fed shotgun that's a quick reload, much more close course, faster fire rate kind of shotgun. I know a lot of people want the classic shotgun to come back. I do as well, but if it fits the role properly, again, we haven't played the game yet, so we have to wait until see how this shotgun actually plays out. Personally, I like the older like pump action shotgun that we've had in Halo previously, but I'm gonna give this one a fair shot. Here's the VK-78 assault rifle. This one is very similar to like a heavy assault rifle you might have played in other games. 
uh, kind of a slow fire rate, heavy damage kind of weapon. At least that's the performance that we've seen of this weapon from the gameplay trailer. Now, a very interesting thing I want to point out about this VKA Commander, because you're probably thinking, oh, it's just a regular old assault rifle. But the interesting thing I want to point out here, which I did point out in my initial video for the review of all the weapons that we saw in the gameplay demo, is look at this. This is a firing mode selector right here. This looks kind of like fully auto and single fire kind of look to it. Now keep in mind the position that we see within this right here, because when you switch over to the gameplay demo, you see it's in a completely different position here. Now this could just be an art style change to it, but my feeling is that you'll be able to select the firing mode of the VK Commando, whether or not you want it to be in single fire or in fully auto mode. In the gameplay demo, it did seem like a rather irregular firing pattern when it came to shooting those grunts. So possibly that might be the first time we'll have fire selecting it as an option within Halo Infinite. And I also want to point out with this MA-40 Assault Rifle, you can take a look at the fire selector that we have right here. This one looks like it's in the F position, whatever that might be. We have a 1, which could be like a single shot option. And this one looks like a 5 of some sort, or maybe an S, whichever that could possibly mean. The reason why I want to point this out as well, because if you look at the gameplay demo, you can see that this switch is in a different position compared to what we're seeing right here within the recent development update, meaning you could select the different fire rates of this MA-40 assault rifle as well. Here's one of my favorite changes within Halo Infinite. It's gonna be the Hydra. This weapon does look pretty freaking awesome. I do like this design a lot more than we had in Halo 5. This looks more kind of like straightforward, functional purpose kind of design rather than Halo 5s, which is much more bulby, artistic, and uh, not exactly like the art style I like. Of course, that's just my preference. I really don't see a whole lot to dissect besides it probably just being like a Hydra and probably acting the same way as in Halo 5, or it could be very different. We'll just have to wait and see until we get our hands on it. Here's one of my favorite changes to Halo Infinite, and that is the new Needler. This Needler looks like so true to like the classic CE Needler. A little more sleek, a little more angular, and just a little more deadly looking. Like, look at those spikes, nice jagged kind of like look to them. It looks like you could stab somebody with them. But of course, we never had that feature before in Halo, but maybe in Halo Infinite, we don't know. And just to cover all our bases, this is from the December update, but here's the new sniper rifle, the S7 sniper rifle. I looked at it, there's not really else to look at besides it being an awesome looking sniper rifle. And we also have the M41 Spanker rocket launcher. Again, I looked at detail on this one, not a whole lot to look at besides just a cool looking rocket launcher. And since we're on the topic of weapons, the Ravager was recently changed as well, saying in this direct quote saying, the Ravager has got to be one of my favorite weapons. It has changed a little since the debut in the campaign reveal. Its role and playstyle has been pushed to allow more of an area of denial play while still delivering a unique launcher style platform. I think this is an interesting twist. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. And this next section kind of goes into post-launch support and how 343 is looking to make sure to keep the meta of Halo Infinite fresh, exciting, and something that the players actually want. A big issue that we had in Halo 5 was that it seemed like the developers at 343 wanted the meta in Halo 5 to be their way, while the players wanted it to be their way, and we tried to get some awkward middle ground, which didn't really please anybody. But this is what 343 had to say about meta and weapon balancing and community feedback. With Halo Infinite, the investment we have made to our tools allows us to be more responsive to balance issues and opportunities. And of course, we are also committed to keeping the game fresh via meta shifts, new weapons, vehicles, etc. Halo Infinite truly is unlike any Halo before it when it comes to our support and commitment to the game and our players. In terms of our weapons, we look at data and feedback from every source we can find. We then look at the weapon's intended role and function. From there, we decide what the best changes are for the weapon or if it's behaving as intended. Like I mentioned, this is super important to know that 343 is gonna be listening to the community and they've been doing a lot better job of listening to the community pretty much ever since Sketch came in as the community manager. I feel like 343 is taking leaps and bounds to really listen to the community, interact with us, and let us be a part of the development of this game. Of course, at this point, it's really just kind of words and promises. We have to really kind of wait until the game finally releases to see if 343 lives up to what they're saying right here, but it sounds like they're really open talking with the community to get the weapon and meta that players really want. 
So yeah, this is the long video, but I told you guys that this vlog update was absolutely massive and each section does deserve its own video to kind of go into depth about talking about what has changed, what's coming and their philosophies behind building out the sandbox of Halo Infinite. If you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. Check out the videos on the screen over here if you missed any content from me recently. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.